I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll okay, switch off my camera. Okay. Uh, after this, please allow me to share my screen so that I can show you my presentation. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, so I'm starting with advanced accountancy or accounting is our subject. As we guys have seen in this particular topic, we are going to talk about certain aspects such as these are the things which we are going to see in topic number one. Still we at point number one, concepts of principles that is um, generally accepted accounting principles and conventions we are going through. So in yesterday's session, we guys have talked about this, generally accepted accounting principles. And uh, the point which we guys have seen, we have considered the classification of accounting or classification of GAAP. There are not only principles, there are not only uh, conventions, both things are here, Con concepts and conventions both are taking place. As far as the uh, concepts are concerned, there are uh, or eight or ten concepts and uh, when it comes to conventions or accounting conventions there are four accounting conventions as such so as a part of this yesterday only we guys have seen two concepts that was business entity concepts and going concern concept now in today's session what we are going to see we are going to see dual aspect concept cost concept money measurement concept accounting period concept realization concept and matching concepts this is my agenda for today's session and uh, we are going to talk about business entity already we guys have talked then account going concern also we guys have talked and dual aspect also we guys have seen in yesterday's session and uh, we were here for the cost concept so i'm starting my session with this uh, with this particular concept today so in or so far we guys have seen three concepts and those three concepts were business entity going concern and dual concept now we are starting with concept number four and which is named as cost concept so here in this particular concept somebody's mic is open please or is on i request her or him to turn off her or his camera or his mic so here in this particular concept of cost concept we are going to talk about something different so what is that i will explain you in a precise manner so just pay attention and here if you want to ask some questions or if you do, if you would like to ask some questions please uh, ask me in between also so the concept is what cost concept if you look at the name you can understand what does it mean cost means what cost means not price the cost is always cost so what is that that we are going to see look we buy certain types of assets basically there are different types of assets in the company or there are different types of assets that we want for the organization and uh, those assets are like you know we want current assets we want fixed assets and when we buy fixed assets for our business and when we record those assets in business as per their cost instead of writing market prices so there are two, two types of prices that we consider for the purpose of financial statements but when we write assets in the balance sheet asset side we do not write um, assets or the prices of market prices of assets we write only cost prices cost price means what let me tell you Cost price, cost price means what? The price which is paid at the time of buying that asset. When we bought that asset, whatever price we have paid at the time of buying that asset is called as cost price. So we use the same cost price while recording in the balance sheet. And that particular thing is called what? Cost concept. So I'm going to explain you. Fixed assets are recorded at cost price and are systematically reduced by the process called depreciation. Just a matter. Oh, sorry. Extremely sorry. Okay. So here, what I'm going to tell you, when we buy fixed assets for the business, we record them by using cost price. Cost price means what? And market price means what? 
let me tell you the meaning of word or mean concept of cost price cost price is what the price which is paid कोण आहे रे ते आवाज बंद करा म्हणले की बंद करा तुमचा कॅमेरा आणि माईक दोन्ही बंद असले पाहिजे कोण होते ते सुप्रिया गायकवाड सुप्रिया गायकवाड कॅन यू सी माय प्रेझेंटेशन नाव Ask Supriya to not to interrupt. Okay. So see, I was uh, telling you the difference between cost price and market price. Cost price is nothing but what the price paid by the person at the time of buying that asset. Asset we can get as soon as we can. Upon kimmat we read as the till upon cost price one. So same price we write in balance sheet while mentioning or while recording the asset. We need to record the asset in the balance sheet, right? So whenever we buy asset, we write in our books of accounts, and that is in balance sheet. So when we write in balance sheet, we write the price which is which is paid by the buyer at the time of buying the asset. Okay, so that is called as what cost price, and uh, uh, actually assets have depreciations. Every asset, whatever it is, every assets have depreciation except uh, land. Okay, so. we systematically reduce the amount of depreciation from that cost price for example you know if we go for charging 10% on cost and the cost is rupees 1 lakh and the life of that asset is 10 years so we charge 10% every year and by end of the 10 year the asset will be zero so this way we go for writing of assets in the balance sheet and this is called what going for cost price market price means what in certain cases the price of the asset will increase or the price of asset will appreciate okay if there is an appreciation if there is an appreciation that we do not consider while writing asset in the balance sheet so whenever we write assets in the balance sheet that is recorded with its cost price remember and when we try to write or when we mention or when we record assets in the balance sheet by using cost price it is called as cost concept and one more thing that i will i would like to tell you here we always charge depreciation on cost price not on market price because cost price is the basic solution and basic price on which we need to charge depreciation upon depreciation in name cost price for the charge for the market price for the nahi let's take care so this is what uh, when we go for such kind of record when we go for such kind of system that we follow in the financial statements or writing balance sheet it is called what cost concept these assets will disappear from balance sheet at the end of their economic life as i told you if we have taken one asset for 10 years and that at the end of 10 years that asset won't be there in the balance sheet in the second one matlab ek asset immediately the house of its life hai the hata ke me charge karta hai 1 lakh kimmat hai to the house of the asset in nil hui so this is what this last sentence is given these assets will disappear from balance sheet at the end of their economic life when they have been fully depreciated and sold as scrap once the asset is fully depreciated and uh, there is no cost for the asset then that particular asset will be sold in the market on scrap or for scrap bhangara the type of the asset we going to talk so this is the cost of this is the concept which is called as cost concept so what we guys have learnt in this concept uh, cost concept that i'm going to revise you i'm going to tell you in a brief manner now under the concept of cost concept what we guys have seen Here, whenever we want to record fixed assets in the balance sheet, we record fixed assets by using cost price, and systematically, and systematically we reduce those assets by charging certain amount of depreciation. And this kind of particular thing or this particular system is called what cost concepts. When the total life of the asset is over, at the end of the total life of the asset, that asset will be sold in the market for scrap. And this is called as what cost concept. I hope you guys have understood. Only the sir can disturb you. Then my bagu will tell you. Who is it? Who is it? Siddhi or Savi? Siddhi, what is it? Okay. Okay, ready. Can you see my presentation now? Okay. 
रिकॉर्डेड it means what i think we guys have studied this concept in 11 commerce we only record monetary transactions in the books of accounts we do not record non monetary transaction in the books of accounts so this is what this money measurement concept is that so we are going to understand what is money measurement concept so look at this only those transactions are recorded which can be expressed in monetary terms so as far as this concept is concerned or according to this concept is concerned we only record money related transactions monetary transaction monetary term transactions or we record only money related transaction in the business organization or in accounting and when we go for recording money related transactions in the business organization those can be called as or that particular thing or that particular system or that particular concept is called as money measurement concept so what you guys have to remember under this concept or according to this concept only transactions are recorded which can be expressed which can be measured in terms of monetary terms or in monetary items okay for example an efficient dedicated manager is definitely an asset to the business but since the monetary measurement is not possible so it is not shown in the books can we show the manager in the books of accounts no though he is very brilliant though he is very good though he is he is an asset for the business but it is not in terms of money so this is what what we are going to see all types of transactions which are related which are expressed which are measured in monetary terms those only recorded we do not record human beings in the business organizations remember and when we go for this this is called as money measurement concept or money a uh, measurement concept it's that is that okay next one accounting period concept see whenever or whatever sort of accounting work we are doing that is there for a certain period actually uh, there are three types of years that we see calendar year we see then you know academic year we know and financial year also we know what do you mean by calendar year a calendar year stands from uh, starts from 1st january and ends with 31st december this is calendar year then when it comes to academic year means your college year it starts from june and ends with may right then when it comes to financial year that is always used for the purpose of accounting remember whenever we go for financial year basically the use of financial year is what for the purpose of accounting so financial year starts from 1st march and ends sorry 1st april and ends with 31st march so for the purpose of accounting also there is one particular period which is considered and accounting is maintained for one particular financial year so whatever financial year we are considering for the purpose of accounting and that particular period is called out accounting period so here whenever you want to go for one sort of accounting one particular period is considered and when we consider one particular period and do the accounting it is called out accounting period concept so this is the concept of accounting period see then accounting can be done for one year accounting can be done for one uh, half yearly it can be done for quarterly it can be done for uh, weekly it can be done for monthly it can be done for one day also so whatever period you are considering for the purpose of accounting and if you consider period a period for accounting it is called out accounting period concept so it is necessary to know at frequent intervals how things are going and from that accounting particular period we can understand how the things are going what sort of uh, progress business is doing or not if business is able to do the progress or not then we can understand if we are making an making an accounting for one week definitely will be able to understand what sort of progress is made by the business in last week and this is what it is required to understand what sort of progress is done so accounting period concept means what a certain period is there 
or own certain period is considered for the purpose of accounting and which is called about accounting period concept then 12 months period is usually adopted by the for this purpose as i told you basically whenever we think about accounting we do not make accounting for one week or one month or six months we go for accounting by considering a period of 12 months which is called as financial year and this time period is called as accounting period so whatever period you have decided for the purpose of accounting that is called as accounting period and on the basis of that accounting period we go for accounting and when it is done like this it is called as accounting period concept i hope you guys have understood next one next one is here realization concept what do you mean by realization that also i am going to tell you uh, the, look at the points that i have taken here revenue is considered earn on the day see for what we do the business we do the business for the purpose of profit there is no businessman who runs business for the purpose of loss as a kutla vyakti hai ka to loss sathe business karte no there is no person who cannot find such kind of person in our life who is doing business for the purpose of loss so revenue is considered earned on the day transfer goods to customer in exchange of valuable consideration this is of great importance in shipping business from inflating their profit the account usually use dates so see from this we get a realization see we open one realization account i think uh, in uh, different topics we guys have seen realization account is perfect realization means what whatever goods you have purchased for example you purchased some goods for the purpose of uh, selling so purchase price is different than the selling price and whatever is the difference between those uh, prices for example purchase price and sales price whatever is the difference that is profit and that is the realization so this is the concept of realization and through this we try to find out the profit and when we go for this it is called about realization concept moving on to the next one matching concept so matching is not a dress matching as such so what they are going to match we are going to match with something else so what is that just look at the information profit is most important factor for the proprietor to keep the business activities as i told you why proprietor or why businessmen go for the business they go for the business because they want to earn profit and if they want to earn profit they have to conduct certain business activities and for profit is the most important motive behind conducting the business or behind running the business if i'm not wrong so because of that profit business activities are conducted so here in case of matching concepts so what we are going to say we are going to consider we are going to match to two things which are they we are going to match revenue and expenses revenue and their related expenses in the same accounting period so what we are going to see what we are going to see if we consider one particular accounting period so in that particular accounting period we are going to talk about revenue we are going to talk about expenses if you if you want to uh, get some revenue you need to spend some money tumhara jar revenue milwat asal profit milwat asal tumhara udar kharch karava lagta so here there is a matching between revenue and expenditure or revenue or expenses purpose of matching concept is to avoid miss stating earning for a business and what is the purpose of this they want to mistake they want to avoid mistake in the process of earning a profit for a particular period so in matching concept what you guys have to remember you guys have to remember matching concept is there for the purpose of two different items what are those two different items revenue and expenses remember and when we try to match with revenue and expenses definitely it is called as matching concept now i think uh, all those accounting concepts which were there eight accounting concepts we have seen uh, if you do not remember the names i'll show you what sort of name concepts we guys have seen so far we guys have seen eight concepts of accounting first one that was seen and that was a business entity concept second one which we guys have seen that was going concern concept third one dual aspect concept cost concept money measurement concept accounting period concept we have also seen a realization concept also we have seen matching concept also we have seen so in total we guys have seen eight concepts which are related to accounting so these are the accounting concepts 
now we are going to talk about accounting conventions and what are they and which are they i will show you now accounting convention what i told you about conventions conventions are what conventions are the customs and traditions that we follow in the accounting practices accounting convention means kya sangit lib tumhala customs and traditions that we follow in the profession of accounting which are called as accounting conventions remember what is accounting pro concept procedures accounting conventions now there are three accounting conventions remember there are three accounting conventions that we use that we follow that we that are there in the accounting those are conventions of consistency conventions of full disclosure conventions of conversism and conventions of uh, convention of materiality so these are the four conventions we are going to see now first one convention of consistency what do you mean by consistency can anybody tell me what do you mean by consistency what do you mean by consistency anybody has to answer somebody has to answer and mute and answer my question come on maintain their uh, means uh, quality quality like mm. maintain their um, performance and, yes okay consistency means performance now we are talking about accounting convention and convention of consistency so consistency should be there in the maintaining maintaining of accounting records when we go for accounting and when we maintain a consistency in accounting record for example for one year we have kept the records of accounting we maintained the records of accounting but in second year we have not maintained anything else so this this doesn't show there is a consistency if we maintain it for next upcoming some years it is called as consistency is there but if we do not maintain the consistency if you do not maintain the accounting for upcoming years or for the next year it is called as there is no consistency but yeah, when we go for consistency of maintaining the accounting records it is called as what there is a consistency and when this kind of procedure or this kind of uh, custom or this kind of tradition is followed it is called as what there is a consistency now i will explain you in a detail ma'am accounting method and policies remain same from one period to another period whatever accounting methods you are using for first year those are there for second year whatever policies you are using for first year those are there for first year second year third year fourth year whatever it is so if you do so we can call it there is a consistency in maintaining the accounting record okay so this is called what consistency convention we are going to see customs and traditions here in circumstances changes become necessary so the change should be stated carefully if you want to make certain changes according to the circumstances which are there so those are those should be made in a careful manner as we know that we used to go for accounting before covid and now we are doing accounting after covid certain changes are taken place and those are there because of the situation because of the circumstances which are happened because of covid so those are taken place in a clear manner but accounting procedure is there accounting you know uh, Uh, there is a consistency in maintaining the accounting record the way of maintaining the record is changed no doubt at all because of covid but it is there so if we do so if we maintain the same things so if we follow the same things for upcoming year next year or whatever whatever it is it is called as consistency so what you guys have to remember it should be consistently consistently maintained it should be consistently prepared it should be consistently followed and then only it called it can it can be called as what convention of consistency so this is the first convention that we get have seen now convention of full disclosure see full disclosure means what they have to show all related and relevant material in their statements so see whatever financial statements that we make for the purpose of accounting those should be full disclosed it means what we cannot hide anything else we cannot Uh, you know leave anything else to show in the financial statements while showing financial statements or while disclosing financial statements we need to show each and every item which is related to financial statement in the financial statement 
if you do not show if you try to hide it will not be the part of what full disclosure full disclosure means what you have to publish you have to show to the public whatever it is applicable so financial statements and their notes should be present all information and that is relevant but those should be relevant that is relevant and material to the users understanding the statement if somebody wants to understand your statement of financial statements we need to uh, disclose all the relevant information and material to the users in the financial statements while showing your financial statements to the public or general public or users we need to publish all relevant material and information and if we do so that will be useful for the users to understand the financial statements of the company and this is what and this could be followed and when we go for it it is called as convention of full disclosure i hope you have understood the concept of convention of full disclosure moving on to the next one and that is here convention of convertism so what is this convertism that also we are going to see losses are recorded when they are expected to occur gains are only recognized once they are certain to happen that is they have happened this is done to assets and revenue are not overstated liabilities and expenses are not understated most of the time what happen you know whenever business will get certain sort of losses those should be expected if we expect them if we expect that there are a possibility of losses and most of the cases in covid cases or in covid the pandemic most of the organization they expected losses and they got it so if you are expecting losses then those should be recorded if you are expecting gains those should be recorded in a right manner then it is expected that assets and revenues should not be overstated or should not be shown more sometimes what happen you know we we'll try to show assets we we'll try to increase assets unnecessarily at the same time we we'll try to show liability that expenses are decreased so whatever practices are actually happening we need to go for it and this is called what convention of convergence so that is expected and that is the concept or that is the convention of convergence so here i have given one example example applying convergence losses how they have shown they have to show again here is one example now the convention of materiality this one is the last convention that we are going to see under this particular concept of or under this particular convention of materiality what they have given this look at this only those transactions important facts and items are shown which are useful and material for the business so here in case of this convention of materiality we guys have to show some important things some important transactions some important facts which are useful and material for the business organization which are not useful which are not materialistic for the business organization do not show them the firm need not record immaterial and in, insignificant items those are immaterial those who are in, insignificant for the business organization do not show those things in the accounting record and this is what they have said only those transactions important facts and items are shown which are useful and material for the business so whatever is important whatever are the transactions which are useful materialistic and uh, useful for the business those only shown here and those who are not which are not useful those which are immaterial those which are insignificant those should be avoided and this is what this particular convention is called as what materiality and here we have done with accounting concepts and accounting uh, conventions we have done with accounting principles and accounting conventions in a thorough manner if you would like to ask some questions you can ask your questions so this is for my aim for today's session and the first bit of our topic number 1 is finally over so if you would if would you like to ask some questions you can ask i'll get back to the home screen and there i will keep this forum open for you all so here i'm going to stop the recording also